Come ride the little train that is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet. And even more when you get to the junction. Petticoat Junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. It is run by Kate, come and be her guest at the junction. And that Circle Joe, he's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Petticoat Junction. Petticoat Junction, brought to you by Ivory Liquid. So pure, so white, so mild, it helps keep your hands soft and young looking. <laughs> Glass roof tower. <laughs> what do they need a glass roof tower for? <laughs> Governor plans grassroots tour. No food. Where does it say that? Right there. Oh. What's he want to tour the roots for? I don't know. Read the article. In an E X C L U S I exclusive stupid. In an exclusive stupid interview. <laughs> stated today that Newt Kiley he didn't state nothing about Newt Kiley the paper Newt Kiley's paper oh, oh. hi Newt <laughs> the governor stated today that he would leave the state capital capital <laughs> yeah, early next week to we're coming to Fred Zeppel's pig farm I know my smell is as good as yours <laughs> Right in the snoot. Fred oughtn't to send him down to get the paper. <laughs> the governor stated today that he'll leave the state within a week for an extended. The governor's going to pay us a visit. Well, I'll be very happy to meet him. Kate, you don't just meet governors, you got the formal reception. Uncle Joe. Oh. I've got to do my cleaning. Which is more important, meeting the governor or cleaning? Well, I wouldn't want him to drop in and find a dusty lot. <laughs> Who's going to drop in? The governor. What governor? Of the state. How about that? How about what? The governor's going to visit us. Oh. Mom, do you want us to put supper on now? Yes, would you please? You too. <laughs> What's the matter with them? Didn't they hear what I said about the governor visiting us? Remember the time when you told him the president was going to drop in for coffee? Yeah. Be sure and clean the carrots. Well, maybe you ain't excited, but I am. You'll move, Grandfather. Hey. You got to jump Fred's king. What? <laughs> jump Fred's king. No, I don't want to hear Fred sing. <laughs> oh, I wasn't going to sing. Hey, fellas, you seen the paper? Shh. Well, look, this is important. So is this. It's a ten-cent game. <laughs> the governor's coming. What? The governor's coming. I ain't humming. Fred's singing. <laughs> Sam, you know what's in the paper? I ought to. I printed it. No, I wouldn't make that move, Fred. For crying out loud, how can you sit there playing checkers with all the work we've got to do? What work? Getting ready to greet the governor. We'll be glad to as soon as we have coffee with the president. <laughs> Ain't I entitled to one mistake? Not with the president. Well, I'm not making a mistake with the governor. Well, you are if you think we're going to stand at attention in the hot sun for six hours. They're holding coffee cups. <laughs> Look, the governor's coming to Hooterville. The paper didn't say that at all. No, I read that exclusive stupid interview. <laughs> Did you read it all? No, I was too busy throwing papers out of the cab. Well, now, that reminds me. Watch where you throw them, because Arnold Snoot's all sold up. Hey? I say, Arnold Snoot's swole. Arnold Snoot's swole? Who's he? <laughs> uh, it's your move. Oh, for crying out loud. Oh, now, what'd you do that? So you pay some attention to your civic pride. 
It says right here in this article. That the governor's making out his itinerary, and he'd welcome invitations from any and all remote areas that he hasn't had an opportunity to visit. And that don't mean Hooterville. We ain't a remote area. No, we're a hinterland. <laughs> don't you want to improve ourselves? <laughs> all we want is to play checkers without being bothered by some windbag. Now, you put them checkers back like they was. Fred, either that or your snoot's going to be more swole than Arnold. <laughs> Who's this Arnold Snoot <laughs> You fellas want the governor to visit us, or don't you? We don't. Is that your last word? No. Our last word is get out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you here, and Fred have two men over here, right? Read back what I've dictated to you, Billy Joe. Hey, Your Excellency, the governorship. Are you sure that's the way you address the governor? That's the way I address the president, except for the governorship. All right. Dear Excellency, four score and seven years ago, your father paid us a visit. And since then, we haven't seen much of your family. And we behoove upon you to... Oh, I think we ought to change that. We behoove upon your excellency. Ooh, that's much better. What excellency are you behooving on? The governors. Uncle Joe is sending him an invitation from the Hooterville Chamber of Commerce to pay us a visit. Oh, did the chamber meet and vote to send him a letter? Uh, well, they didn't exactly vote to send it. Oh? Of course, they didn't vote not to. Well, what did they do? Well, mostly we just sat around and watched Grandpappy Miller and Fred play checkers. <laughs> oh, so you're taking it upon yourself to send the letter. Okay, somebody has to help put Hooterville on the map. Forget the letter. <laughs> oh. As a citizen, yes. I have a right to invite the governor to visit my hinterland. If the people of Hooterville are too backward to realize the benefits that'll occur from such a visit, it ain't my fault if they find out. Did you say benefits? What benefits? Okay, you remember the thousands of people that flocked into town when they thought the president was going to stop by for a coffee break? Remember them? I can still see them chasing you down Main Street with a bucket of tar and a basket of feathers. Hey, what's ancient is history. The facts are that when the news gets around that the governor is here, the people are going to flock into town in a buying mood. Eating ice cream, swilling soda pop, waving pennants, chomping peanuts. Pennants, aha! Uh -huh. That's the reason you're so anxious to have the governor visit us. Kate, them 5,000 pennants I got stuck with is purely incidental to my pride and my civic virtue. But you were planning to unload them if the governor did visit us. Well, they do fit the occasion. They say hail to the chief, and the governor's the chief of state, ain't he? Why don't you invite Geronimo? He's a chief you can hail, too. <laughs> we all have to do our duty as we see it. Right, and my duty is to see that you don't send that letter. Kate. That's I... my last word. And you've got to admit... It's a lot politer than what Sam must have said. <laughs> Wait. You want a mild dishwashing detergent, don't you? Then get today's ivory liquid. See its amazing mildness demonstrated by the 30-day rubber glove test. We started with a group of typical ivory liquid users like Mrs. Robert Forstner. Though she normally does not wear rubber gloves, for this test, she wore a glove on one hand. Result? After 30 days, both Mrs. Forstner's hands looked soft, lovely. Could you tell her left hand was gloved? Even I can't see the difference. One hand was in dishwater, one was protected by the glove, yet both looked smooth. I always knew ivory liquid was mild, but this test really amazed me. Pure, creamy white. Ivory liquid makes rich, hard-working suds, too. Remember the rubber glove test before you wash dishes again. See for yourself how today's ivory liquid helps keep hands soft, young looking. Try it. you that this is a meeting of the every other Wednesday afternoon discussion club and not the meeting of the fighting and squabbling club? <laughs> now the train will be here in 20 minutes and that'll give us just enough time to hear Selma Plout give one of her ever popular book reviews. <laughs> oh. What book are you reviewing, Selma? The same one I've been trying to review the last 10 meetings. Dr. Holbein's Vegetable Gardening on a Budget. <laughs> Nobody is interested in vegetable gardening on or off a budget. Emily, 
You may not like the books that Selma reviews, but the least you can do is give her the courtesy of listening. Thank you. We're waiting, Selma. Vegetable gardening on a budget. <laughs> Selma started her book review yet? <laughs> you look thirsty? <laughs> well, I guess this is a critical moment. Now, remember what you're supposed to do. <laughs> and don't forget. As Dr. Holbein so poetically phrases it, you can't beat beets if you want to eat sheep. <laughs> to plant beets, Dr. Holbein suggests... Excuse me, ladies, I thought you might like to wet your whistles while you're listening to Selma's dry book report. <laughs> oh, but that, that's, that's very nice of you, Uncle Joe. My lips are so dry, I could hardly pucker. <laughs> Please, I'm not finished. Oh, yes, that's right. Uh, oh, oh, sit down. Uncle Joe, you're disrupting the meeting. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Isn't that cute? Now, what's that stupid animal doing, waving a pennant with Hail to the Chief on it? Yes, what is he doing? He must be getting ready to greet our chief executive of the state, otherwise known as the governor. Governor? Uncle Joe, please. <laughs> I hadn't heard the governor was going to visit us. According to the bylaws, there'll be no souvenirs sold at the meetings. <laughs> Go ahead with your book report, Selma. Not until I find out what this is all about. You mean Kate hadn't brought up the subject of the reception you ladies are giving His Excellency? She certainly didn't. Well, according to the newspapers, the governor is making a tour of all the outstanding small towns which ask him to stop over for a visit. Now, I was delegated to write a letter inviting them to... Uh, Uncle Joe, nobody delegated anybody to write a letter. Why not? Because certain backward elements which shall remain Sam Drucker ain't interested in having him visit. <laughs> Sam Drucker isn't running our town. I make a motion we authorize Mr. Carson to write the letter to officially invite the governor to visit Hooterville. All in favor, raise their hand. <laughs> Uncle Joe, you have no right to and come in. And when, all except Kate's. <laughs> but he has no official standing in this group. He's not a member. Well, we can take care of that. All of those in favor of making Mr. Carson a member of the Ladies Every Other Wednesday Afternoon Discussion Club, raise their hand. <laughs> Hello, members. I'm sorry. Now that the ladies have okayed me writing a letter, there's no point in you showing your sour grapes. Later, when you're packing your suitcase, I'll show you bunches of them. You're gonna need me more than ever to handle the arrangements for the governor spending the night here. What was that? The last paragraph of this letter extends a cordial free invitation for him to be the guest of the management of the Shady Rest. Aha! Uh -huh. Now, this whole thing is becoming clear to me, Kate Bradley. Your reluctance to mention the governor's visit. Tricking us into putting Uncle Joe up for them. Tricking you! <laughs> Just so as we'd authorize him to write a letter inviting the governor to stay here at the Shady Rest. Some I didn't realize you were going to make him a member. Although I can't imagine why he'd want to stay here at this creaky old dust catcher. <laughs> Just a minute. Just where do you suggest he stay? Why, at my place, of course. Why, at your place, of course. Second mortgage manor. Come on. Me and you's got to air out a few thousand pennants. Uh, girls, the train's coming. Let it wait. I've got a few more insults left. <laughs> and then he came in waving one of those moth-eaten pennants that Uncle Joe's stuck with. <laughs> And your head won't do any good. When Uncle Joe leaves, you go with him. <laughs> <laughs> Told Uncle Joe to forget that letter. And then I found myself arguing with some of plot about where the governor was going to stay. <laughs> it isn't fun. Yes, it is, Mom. It is. <laughs> yeah, yes, it is. You know, that whole rascally outmaneuvered me. <laughs> Okay, Uncle Joe, it's safe for you to come in now. Hi, Kate. Uncle Joe. Oh, Mom, 
now don't you be a sore loser. Oh, what's the use? Kate, I just did it for you. For me or to me? <laughs> Kate, you're going to be a wealthy woman. When the word gets around that the governor slept here, thousands of people are going to break down your doors, fighting to occupy the same suite the governor slept in. What suite? The old presidential suite. What old presidential suite? It's room three, right next to the bathroom. <laughs> oh, let him stay at Selma Plouts. <laughs> Kate, don't you realize it'll take only one night out of the governor to put the shady rest on the map? Who ever heard of the White House till George Washington slept there? <laughs> we can raise the rates, four dollars a night, including an authentic hail to the chief pennant. <laughs> I know, Kate, you're speechless with gratitude. <laughs> in some shampoos, the pearl drops, but in liquid brown. Liquid brown, so luxurious, a pearl drip. Extra rich leather that leaves your hair clean, glowing with a look of luxury. Extra rich liquid brown. Have a wonderful cruise. You know it's a man. Oh, I worry meeting men. Perspiration. Did you get my present? Travel kit? Lovely. Something new in it. Secret isn't new. This secret is. Got something extra. Keeps underarms so dry you feel cool. Calm. Call your ship to shore. Bye. Uh-huh, every dance. Cool work. New Ice Blue Secret helps keep you cool, calm, dry. Governor arrives today. Oh! <laughs> See you at the Shady Rest, Newt. <laughs> Recession skadoodled at the Shady Rest. <laughs> Reception scheduled at the Shady Ranch. <laughs> yeah, how about that? <laughs> Remember when Fred punches me in the snoot for hitting all in the snoot, you did it. <laughs> Nine o'clock, haven't you got them pies baked yet? I've been up since 5.30. I got 15 of them to make. The governor will be here at 3 o'clock. Don't worry about me. Details, details. I don't know why I let you talk me into taking charge. <laughs> talk you into taking charge? <laughs> what is that? That's a Hooterville world-renowned baton twirling trio. Come on. Can't do this. Me neither. Oh, why don't we just keep time? <laughs> Out in front of the volunteer fire department's band and the governor grand march from the track up to the hotel. Hold it. I rent those batons for the former curtain rods from my room. Kate, I couldn't take them out of the governor's suite. Put them back. No. Kate, you gotta make a few patriotic sacrifices. That's politics. Politics? Yeah. Who knows? Someday maybe you'll want a favor from the governor. With what's going through my mind right now, the only favor I want from him is a pardon. <laughs> I don't know how we let Joe Eucharist into this. Where's a review on stand? That's it. <laughs> well, put it together. We don't know how. The way you did when the president didn't show up. What do we need a review on stand for, anyway? To review the parade. Well, how are we going to do that? We are the parade. Sometimes I'm sorry I wrote that letter to the governor. Who asked you to? My ladies' club. <laughs> if you want to do something... Which we don't. Get rid of that lumber and take that bunting and decorate the train with it. The bunting that was supposed to go on the reviewing stand. Ain't enough to cover a whole train. Well, put it on one side. Which side? The side he gets off on. <laughs> details. Details. <laughs> Ain't you done yet? We've been waiting for you for rehearsal. You gotta learn what to do when the governor gets off the train. I know what to do. I'll shake hands with him. Oh, you're gonna be a flower girl and hand him a bouquet of flowers. I don't have to rehearse that. Well, yes, you do. You gotta know the exact split second when to hand him the bouquet. <laughs> okay. Now that's where you'll be when the train pulls in with the governor. The flowers are Wilton. 
eight. Now, Charlie and Floyd will bring the train to a stop so that the steps are about here. And upon a signal from me, the band will start playing the governor's favorite selection. There'll be a hot time in the old town tonight. Well, now, when the band starts playing, the drum majorette will start twirling. Joe, I just thought of something. How are we going to be playing in the band when we're supposed to be bringing the governor in on the train? That's an interesting question. How can they? Well, I'll figure that out later. <laughs> now, when I raise my hand, I want the music to stop. Which hand? <laughs> what difference does it make? Well, I don't want to stop on the wrong hand. <laughs> you ain't going to be playing anyway. Oh, did you figure it out, Uncle Joe? <laughs> okay. Now, when the band starts playing, I want all of you people to start waving your hail to the chief penance. I was wondering when you were going to get around to them. What penance? Yeah, nobody's got penance. Here you are. Get your hail to the chief penance. Genuine hail to the chief penance, only 50 cents. You can't greet the governor without an official penance. Hold it. Ain't those the same penance that you were stuck with from your last fiasco? <laughs> Oh, yes, aren't they, Uncle Joe? Look. I think I ought to put these flowers in water. <laughs> Look, you don't have to buy penance if you don't want to. We don't want it. <laughs> Besides, you only got a dime for them for the president. How come they're half a buck for the governor? Lucky His Excellency isn't here to hear your disrespect. <laughs> okay, now let's get on with the rehearsal. Train's in. Man, start playing. the step. Where, where's the governor? We ain't picked him up yet. <laughs> I mean the rehearsal governor. You, Sam. Now, uh, okay, I've stepped down. All right, Kate. Hmm? Oh, uh, rehearsal governor, it gives me great pleasure to present you with this feather duster. Thank you, young lady. I'll vote for you again. <laughs> What's the sense in trying to do anything official? Kate, you aren't supposed to present the governor with a feather duster until after my greeting speech. Oh, why do you have to make the greeting speech? I invited you here, didn't I? Yeah, I'm beginning to be sorry I came. <clears throat> Hello, governor. <laughs> Friends, this is a great day and... Uh... Joe, you don't have to give the whole speech. No, the governor will be here in two hours. <laughs> okay, I'll conclude it. I thank you. All right, Kate. Now, now. Give it to him now. Uh, on behalf of the people of Hooterville, I present you with this bouquet of flowers. Thank you, Mrs. Brad. Mrs. Brad. Don't hide, Your Excellency. <laughs> Mom. What are you wearing those outfits for? Well, we're the solution to Uncle Joe's problem. I'm going to do the twirling for the trio. Well, but you girls don't play those instruments. That's all taken care of, Kate. Now, everybody in their places for the governor. Now, one final word. This is your last chance to buy a hail to the chief pennant to wave at the governor for 25 cents. Anybody want to buy a pennant? <laughs> Don't give up, Uncle Joe. Maybe the governor will adopt them as the official flag of the state. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. Don't nobody panic. Don't worry. Where's your duster? Where's your duster? I panicked and brought the flowers instead. Okay. Okay. All right, Ben. Start playing. <laughs> You ain't keeping time. Hey! Keep time! Time? How do I know? I haven't got my watch. <laughs> I had nightmares that weren't as bad as this. <laughs> Stop the record. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, folks, I'm sorry I missed rehearsal, but I had to put cold towels on the arm of swole snoot. <laughs> Get off the train, Fred, so we can meet the governor. We've already met him. He sure is a nice fellow. Where is he? Well, now, Kate, uh, let me tell you what happened. Floyd and Charlie was in Hooterville waiting for His Excellency, and sure enough, this big black machine with the siren come up. And the governor got out. I'll never forget his first words. How do I get to Crabwell Corners? <laughs> kind of brought a tear to my eye. He's going to Crabwell Corners first and then come back. He's not coming back, Kate. Well, he's got to. I sent him an invitation. But let me tell you what happened. <laughs> the governor didn't get no invitation. <laughs> The time the president didn't show up for coffee, you forgot to put a stamp on the envelope. Yeah, I wouldn't make that fool mistake twice. You did put a stamp on the envelope. Why, of course I did. Here, keep it yourself. <laughs> There's no need for my violence. You think that's fast? You should have seen him the day the president didn't show up. <laughs> Please, sit down. Pretend that you've just challenged me to prove new 1965 Tide gets clothes cleaner than any other kind of detergent, okay? First, this week, every week, millions more women use Tide to get their clothes clean than any other wash day product. So what, you might say? So this. You can't fool women. They've tried the others in their top loaders. Low sudsers, tablets, liquids, you name it. And they keep returning to Tide. They like Tide suds. Suds that say heavy-duty cleaning. And remember when you got your washer? That's probably when you first found your washer maker recommends Tide. Twenty-five of them do. Do they have to? Of course not. But they want happy customers. They know nothing gets clothes cleaner than Tide. Still doubtful? Try just one box. Prove to yourself new 1965 Tide gets clothes cleaner than any other kind of detergent. And that's a promise. Petticoat Junction, brought to you by Amazing New Tide, the 1965 Tide that gives you as clean a wash as you can get. Join in. Give your help. This has been a Filmways presentation.